When I was at school, my father started, which was in the 80s, mid 80s. It was just uh, small sections, but it was experimental. I came back to the farm in 94, 100% no till probably around about 95, 96. In those days it was pure monoculture, it was maize on maize on maize. And then we started doing a little bit of soyers. And when we started going more into no-till, then we on a two-thirds, one-third. Two-thirds maize, one-third soya. So cover crops I just started, just as a bit of an experiment. So I thought, oh, this thing, it works over there in America, and it works over there where they get winter rainfall, but it doesn't work here. And I had that opinion for a long time, that cover crops don't work here. We're too hot, we're too dry in winter. There's no way we can go cover crops here. And then one year I thought, well, let me try a bit. It actually looked very good. And the maize following it also looked very good. Now, if you've got a cover crop after your soyas, that's a lot of material, plus it's quality material at a time of the year when you've got nothing. Suddenly in August, you can have high quality, high quantity feed. Every year, we have a certain number of kilowatts that hit the soil, hit the ground from the sun. So traditionally, we use the sun's energy from November to March. And that's, that's all we use. If you add a cover crop, you can use the sun's energy from November to March, plus its energy from uh, April, May, June, July, maybe even August. If you're using your rain and your sunlight and you're converting and you're making more carbon, then you can produce more crop or more, however you want to look at it, more feed, because your soil is healthier, you've got more carbon in the soil, so the spiral is, is, is going up. Some people say you shouldn't graze your cover, your stalks, it's your, it's your armour, it's what protects your soil from the elements. I see it as a valuable food source to graze it to a point where you're not overgrazing it. So I like to take the maize cobs, let the cattle eat what cobs are left, and the sloughs and the, the easy material, the stuff that, as I put it, blows away anyway. Everybody says, no, no-till doesn't work here. No-till works there in Bergville. No-till works there in America. No-till works there in South America. But here, we can't no-till here. And we used to think exactly the same thing. And it's totally wrong. We can no-till and we can cover crop. We've just got to learn how to.